I mean, despite the anti-hype I keep hearing from folks on Discord, I suppose it was better than the Gwus video. Though, to be fair, five minutes of bass-boosted irritable bowel syndrome would have been better than the Gwus video. Eh, I'll do a video on it anyway. My improv over my initial viewing of this video was too fun to script. So yeah, the video that pokes me out of my comically long creative slump is the CC rant from Sonic Shadow 98, a name you'll be very familiar with if you follow my scary genie compadre. Funnily enough, I had a script for a different video of his in the works, but this one I think provoked more interesting responses from me that I've jotted down here. Something I want to say up front is that a recurring problem throughout the video, mostly the first half, is how a lot of Oscar's grievances boil down to personal distaste more than genuine flaws the community could improve upon. And I understand that merely replying with, this sounds more like it's just your opinion, will get repetitive after a while. It is, however, important that I emphasize exactly how frequent an issue this is, so allow me to tweak a gag I pitched from Pondersprocket. Every time this issue comes up in the video, I'll be reading an excerpt from one of my RPG books. And no, you won't be getting the context. His world is just database for teenage furries. Cartoon character collages, the thinking man's mute button. Hello, I am Sonic Shadow 98, once again with another rant! Ooh, that's the best depiction of life during the AIDS epidemic since Angels in America. This time, I am going to be doing a rant on a certain committee that drives me insane and makes me want to cringe 90% of the time. Motorcycle gangs have 1%ers and commentators have 10%ers. Awesome! No, I am not talking about the Sonic fan base, even though I might do a rant on that in the future. I am talking about the commentary community! Sets up a rant about the whole community, yet only shows five icons. Even Damien Thorne wouldn't touch an omen this bad. For those who don't know, the commentary community is basically people who are commentators that come together and commentate on certain videos. It becomes basically like an entire fandom. That's all fine and all, but there's so many problems with the community. Once it became a community, many of the commentators just said, Fuck it, and did commentaries that were just... Bad. The commentaries in that community got so ridiculous that even Youngblood Fantasy called them out. Are you by any chance referring to Hobbs' video from October 2011? Cause like, ridiculous videos weren't what his grievances at the time amounted to. It was more focused on, in order, the worst case scenario of the bandwagon effect, over focusing on so-called constructive criticism at the expense of entertainment value, repeatedly going after known trolls with the cited example of Mario to Plumber, over reliance on predictable media clips instead of making the point themselves, repetition of certain specific hackneyed phrases, cutting in too often, lacking a sense of humor, inexperienced kids putting no effort into production, commentaries with overlong runtimes that lack in content with the cited example of Home of the Good Guys. Don't you go riding the coattails of one of the few good CC rants just so you can push a flimsy agenda with an a bad one, mate. Now, not all of the people in the commentary community are bad content creators, and not all of them are bad people. Blaze the movie fan, Raven the commentator, Boltifo, Jacob the Redhead, and some others are really cool people, and their videos aren't even that bad. In fact, I am really good friends with them, and we all get along just fine. However, there are many people who make really bad commentaries, and get so many views and subscribers. I am just scratching my head, wondering why people subscribe to them and like the videos so much. Oh, don't act like you didn't see this gag coming. <laughs> Doodle Tones is a major example of how not to make commentaries. Yeah, Doodle, you cook eggs in a pot, not a toilet. I have nothing against her too much as a person. That's the best joke in this video. In fact, I don't even know her personally, but her commentary videos are just bad. They are worse than my past commentaries. Dudo is so boring. And she talks in a condescending tone at times, which can throw some people off. Clockwork guardians are determined to stop people from getting where they shouldn't go. If a character tries to leave a zone with a clockwork guardian, that character must overcome opposition equal to the guardian's physique, if trying to push past it using physique or athletics, or notice if trying to evade it using stealth. 
She joked about autism in her commentary on Step by a Sonic fan, which wasn't even funny in the first place. Piece of shit. And if it wasn't a joke, then it was just really cruel, mean, and messed up. It also wasn't even a commentary if you're talking about the video I think you're talking about, but then that's your cue as the presenter to show which video you are talking about. But that's neither here nor there. Fact is, it's not exactly reflecting well on your intentions when the immediate first grievance you have with Doodle is a single ableist statement within a video from January 2017 at the absolute latest, which to my knowledge, she hasn't repeated since. Or at least if she did make a recurring habit of ableist presumptions in the time since the Sapphire Sonic fan situation, now would be the time to show evidence, because otherwise you come off like you're repeating the same mistakes as your previous commentary on her by picking at old misdeeds from the distant past with no regard for how Doodle has changed since then. I guess bringing up the Todd tweet would have made that agenda way too obvious, wouldn't it? Plush, her voice sounds like Fred Figgerhorn. She sounds like frickin' Fred. If by that you mean literally just the pitch while ignoring the difference in unaltered performance behind the pitch as well as how both of them make vastly different kinds of video, then okay, I suppose you are right. I swear, her commentary videos are so boring that half of the time I am not paying attention to them. The cryptid known as Laplace is an amalgamation of corpses from all sorts of life forms in various states of decomposition, taking a roughly humanoid form. Its cyclopean head exposes a rather large pulsating brain, and its mouth has jagged teeth, sharp enough to cut a hole into the colonies like a tuna can. They just make me want to go watch something else, and I am just rolling my eyes like, when is the video going to end already? I'm bored. Well, well, well. Suddenly hearing a girl's voice, the boy panics and springs to his feet. I'm getting a little worried here. I'll just try to sound like a normal cat. Meow. Also, a lot of Doodle's commentaries are unnecessarily long, like 30 minutes, 50 minutes, or even an hour. See, I don't mind long YouTube videos like that, but when she commentates for maybe even an hour or 50 minutes, and it's just nothing really that engaging or entertaining, I lose interest in it rather fast. You don't even bring up the idea that the video goes nowhere like the aforementioned Home of the Good Guys example in that Youngblood rant, which is generally what people who aren't completely disingenuous are referring to whenever they complain about videos being way too long. You only bring up the idea of being personally bored by it. I mean, dear lord, if that's your attention span, then I dread to think how you'd handle some of the stuff I voluntarily edited. On that note... The figure is still, eyes lightly closed as if sleeping. If touched, the body crumbles, revealing that it was nothing but the dry shed skin of a serpent woman. The throne is designed like a commode, with a hole in the seat. The serpent woman that sat on the throne has shed her skin, her soft body exiting through the throne seat, down a pit, and into the sanctum below. When I do long videos that are even an hour long, I make them really engaging and entertaining and actually offer valid points. Insert reference to auto fellatio here and... All kinds of things can turn someone on, especially if that person is a teenager. Maybe this is a flirtatious glance, a whispered promise for later, or a goofy smile at the right moment. Maybe it's just something they notice about you as you walk past them in the hall. When you use this move, feel free to take the opportunity to step outside your character, to speak like an author would, describing your character's pouty lips or moonlit silhouette. Unlike the other basic moves, turning someone on can be triggered even if there's no specific action being taken. Your character doesn't have to intend to turn someone on. Sometimes, it just happens. And they are long only because I invite Discord guests to do these videos with me as I give them time to say what they think of the subject as I was ranting on with them. That's not mutually exclusive to the idea of a video being long because of padding, though. Doodle doesn't do that at all. She doesn't offer anything engaging. Shark! What else could this be but the Great White? Hammerheads, Mako, and Tiger Sharks are faster and smaller. Athletics 13, Health 12. And their bite carries only a plus two damage modifier. Doodle sounds so monotone and blah, like she really doesn't want to do the commentary in the first place. In-depth discussion of a video you have a negative opinion on naturally invites a sense of negativity in one's delivery. Oh, perish the thought! 
yet people like her videos and subscribe to her. I don't understand that. I am alright if you like Doodle's videos. Which is why I brought up the audience reception in the first place. But I don't see what's so great or outstanding about them. Should've gone to Specsavers. Oh, um, targets explode in a cloud of smelly brimstone, then appear in a similar explosion at the target point. I also don't care for the insane critics, Fractured Lights, and Umbris' commentaries. I haven't watched Fractured Light and Umbris' commentaries in full, but I am pretty sure they are the same condescending bullcrap as Doodle. Almost half the people you discuss by name in this video you admit to not even watching, and more than half you barely spend any time on in the video at all. Remind me why anyone outside of the choir you're preaching to should take your opinion at face value again? I am just not a fan of their work, and don't care to watch them all the way. The insane critic also falls into the same trap. His art style for his avatar is hideous, that even I can draw bare. Okie dokie 4x3 Sonic X stills, I'll take your word for it. <gasps> the humanoids are wrapped in filthy rags. You can't see their faces for the multiple layers of dirty fabric they have wrapped around their heads like cowls. They stand stock still and silent. At a glance, it seems that one in one hundred holds a tall banner aloft, a ragged thing with a single strange symbol, hand-drawn, but not sloppy. The rest all carry a single weapon. It is a length of heavy chain with a sharp pointed hook on the end. They stand, eerily silent, and motionless. And yes, he drew his avatar. His commentaries are also blah. I bet he can't even make a rant video to save his life! Not exactly a high bar to clear when the standard you adhere to is still images, minimal visual evidence, constant appeals to your own subjective stance, and in this case, blind speculation based on someone who you yourself admit you haven't even watched. I look forward to insane critic rants on the evil of cauliflowers. Loudon is, for me now, is okay. He left a sour impression on me after watching his commentary on the first part to My Among Us rant, which I didn't like honestly. The civilized world ends just west of the Mississippi. After that, a traveler crosses into the High Plains, the Sioux Nations, the Coyote Confederation, or Texas, Lord help them. Travelers should tread cautiously and keep a six-shooter handy. I backed this version of Deadlands on Kickstarter, so I'm uh, just letting you know that. But after hearing that his commentaries are really good, they are something I want to check out for myself. So, existing reputation based on word of mouth is your qualifier for whether or not you decide to actually watch the content of the people you're ranting about beforehand? Oh, you bet your glute that I'll be holding you to that standard when you come across this video. So many of the commentators in the commentary community I either don't care for, like Boomslayer, or I just can't stand them. Because of this, it's really hard to find amazing commentaries on YouTube. It was a worn cassette tape that changed your life. When that song had finished playing, you had found a home. You are an insane hard rocker who is high on life and play music so loud that the windows crack. In any case, you wish it would be like that, but you've just learned to play a C on your electric guitar, and soon you will form a band down at the recreation center. The commentary committee is also filled with toxic drama. Seriously, what the hell? What the fuck? There's so much drama! And if you say one little thing that you happen to disagree with them on, they unfairly bash you. One time when I was a member of a mainly a commentary community server, when discussing about how Scott Cawthron, who is the creator of Five Nights and Freddy's by the way, was a bad person simply because he donated to Trump and McConnell, who are anti-LBGT, I didn't quite defend his decision to donate to those two, but rather stated that he wasn't a bad person, and that, while he may have pulled choice, he's not all that bad of a human being. I was also saying that just because he happens to support those two, doesn't mean that he agrees with everything they do or say. I said something along those lines, and I got unfairly bashed for it, acting as like I defended him. I wasn't defending the fact that he donated to these two clowns, I was saying that he probably wasn't too bad of a human being. Yeah guys, Oscar didn't defend Scott Cawthon, he merely downplayed his frequent financial support towards the campaigns of hateful individuals and pushed the idea that this doesn't mean that he agrees with them, irrespective of Cawthon's own position of financial and cultural influence and how it's pointless to cherry pick your reasons for donating to a political cause when the net result is that the recipient still gets financial support, or the fact that this only raises questions as to why he is donating to them in the first place if not due to agreement. That's… that, that, that that's totally different from defending him. 
That goes to show that they are willing to dehumanize certain people just because they support them or because they made a shame mistake. The community can't even take other people's point of views on stuff like that. Calling out someone's limp justification for an individual's problematic behavior is the same thing as dehumanization now? That puts your disdain for the video loud and did on you in a very different light, doesn't it? This seems like less an example of community toxicity and more an example of you not understanding what it means for someone influential to support a political cause and how that can reflect on a person. I do question why Stockhoffen supports Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. Could've fooled me. But at the end of the day, it's his choice and he has every right as an American to support them. And by that same maxim, the people who called you out have every right to call him out for the direct support of people and organizations who you admit to having relentlessly pushed for the pairing back of certain basic human rights. You mentioned the fact that both the recipients were anti-LGBT. Are you starting to see how useless of a defense the phrase, they have the right, swiftly becomes here? Lord knows I have little patience for people who throw around it's just a viewpoint as an excuse to shut down people calling out viewpoints that run the risk of leading to genuine harm being done to marginalized groups. I do not buy your attempt at making that repulsive argument into a screed on how the people who chewed you out are downplaying it are supposedly toxic. I also remember when many members of the commentary committee all have hated my response to Rap Barrage. I expected disagreements to that video, but god damn it, I didn't expect quite as much backlash on that video as I got. Though referred to as a worm, this tortoise-sized creature is characterized by a special bony shell grown from its mouth which acts as its shield. Residing in this maw is a collection of worms whose purpose is to bring scavenged food to the creature. Since it has no legs, the worms also push and pull on the shell to move it around. Sirenes are telepathic and will use suggestion to lure nearby travelers into killing themselves. Worms are then released from the moor to slowly dissect the victim and carry food back to the moor. Sirenes are typically found behind objects and never out in the open. Air ducts on ships are a favorite spot. They were willing to go as far as to say that it was a COMMENTARY which is not! That video still insert a clip from a source video that you were directly replying to within your video. The fan base and the game are two separate things and mixing the two into one in order to fit your narrative does seem either dishonest or as if you were struggling to grasp for an argument. He Why should I show anything? Why should I show screenshots of me seeing all these fucking Among Us memes and all that? You may not have titled it a commentary, but like it or lump it, your videos still serve the same basic purpose as one. Honestly, meaningless prejudice is the only reason I could think of as to why you'd even be mad at this label. Don't worry, a glass of water helps the rat pill go down. And that was the worst commentary of 2021. No, the video isn't a commentary. A commentary is when you commentate over the entire video, with some skipping at times, to give out points and even criticisms. Claims that one of the defining traits of a commentary involves going over the entire video, acknowledges the practice of skipping over segments of the video, thus implying that it isn't always the entire video. That's not even getting into how sometimes you can only take issue with one part of a video rather than the whole thing, or even only want to keep it short and sweet. Like, one-shot commentaries exist. I know that these days they may not be as commonplace to YouTube as much as, say, TikTok stitches, but their mere existence in the first place knocks the supports out from under this arbitrary definition you're throwing around. A response is just a video where you just give your overall thoughts on the video without even showing the entire video, why you like or dislike it, and address any possible flaws kind of like a review or a rant. Tigers get all the press. But this slow timer on a headset is a real killer. I said this before and I will say it again. I showed and sped up some clips from Rap Barrage's video for context. I wasn't even commentating on it. I was showing some clips from the video in my response for context purposes. I did it that way to showcase that this is what he really said and that I wasn't just bullshitting in the response. It wasn't really a commentary whatsoever, nor should it be considered one. As if showing the source in commentaries isn't done for the purpose of illustrating context before the criticism comes in? Yeah, this is not helping your case, Oscar. I told the community that it wasn't a commentary, that it was just a response. They didn't buy it one bit and acted like a response and a commentary of the same thing, which they are not! And you've made a totally amazing case against that notion, haven't you? And as for the response somehow being the worst commentary of 2021, 
Um, I really don't think it deserves that. The laws of Bastion are written so that every crime has a loophole. People paid you to perform crimes legally. Sure, I got way too angry when it came close to the end, but the response wasn't as bad as the community made it out to be. Obviously, I can't speak for everyone in the community who labelled it the worst of the year, but I am bothered by the fact that you defend those claims in part by saying that you, the creator of the video, don't think it's bad. Do you not know of the element of personal bias inherent to being the one with creative control over a project? I once thought really highly of every commentary I made before my 2012 channel jump, and nowadays, well, let's just say there's a reason none of those have come back up. This defense means nothing, is my point. 1977 saw the high-profile deaths of Groucho Marx, Charlie Chaplin, Mark Bowen from T-Rex, and Bing Crosby. Elvis Presley is still up for debate. They said I was being hypocritical and all that BS. I am not going to say all what happened in this rant, because I don't want to be here all day. Yeah guys, taking the ranter's word for it is the convenient method these days. If you want to hear more on what happened, please watch my video Sonic Shell 98 Strikes Back and clarify shit. No thanks, the onus for presenting information is on you as the presenter, and frankly there's some paint I need to watch dry. So much toxic drama has happened within the community. And your only examples in favor of this idea thus far have amounted to... Being chewed out on a Discord server for grasping at straws to defend a prominent game developer donating to socio-politically harmful causes, and people not liking a video you did while referring to it using a label that you don't like. Like, I'm not even saying that the basic point you're making about general community toxicity is necessarily wrong, but if you had any intention on dispelling this stereotype that CC rants focus way too much on personal vendettas, these examples don't help your case. And yes, I know after this he mentioned some drama involving Dan Stein. The Dan Stein drama is one of the many commentary committee dramas. But not with much in the way of elaboration to the same extent as those other two examples, so it might as well not even be there. I can't even stand internet drama, so I am not going to like the community if it's filled with all that drama. Good luck in literally any group of people with differing ideas and viewpoints between individuals in that case, and I'm not just talking about online groups either. So much of the internet drama they've gone into is pointless! It's freaking stupid and pointless! That is not right! Why the hell can't we just all get along, even if we don't agree with one another? Yeah guys, real men don't infight. They make petulant 15 minute rant videos where they deflect blame and hide behind subjective outlooks as a substitute for general criticism. Oh, but woe is me, I can't think of anyone who'd be manly enough to do that. Where's Dorian Electra when you need them? Many of the commentary community videos are just in the same HD style. Well, yeah. YouTube's basic format has involved high definition since the tail end of 2008. What's this even supposed to mean? They don't feel like they are trying to be unique at all. They should at least be a little more different and separate from one another. But no, they aren't. A lot of them just use the same style that has been done to death so many times. I'll even give props to Loudon, or Loudman, for using his camera and recording himself in many of his commentaries, as opposed to doing his commentaries in the same generic style all the time. Ignoring the fact that Loudon often has done his visuals through stills before, Oscar, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but... You do realize you've spent the past 11 and a half minutes not showing your face and opting for the same approach to visual presentation that you've literally just decried here? Like, I'm not saying that this option is bad, though the fact that you only switched to a different Sonic X still at the beginning and the end is not helping, but you seem to imply that it is, so, uh, congratulations, you contributed to the very problem you fabricated to complain about. Oh, don't tell me you're gonna defend this nonsense by continuing to bring up how your video isn't a commentary like that actually means anything in this context. You should try to create your own style, or even your own take on the slideshow style of commentaries. Don't try to be so much the same. Wise words from the creator of Sonic X and literally every work that showed up in that intro sequence of yours. That, that's what you are, isn't it? Because uh, if that's not the case, then this point is mighty unfortunate. This is also why I still do majority of my videos on Windows Movie Maker. It offers something fresh and unique to the table. If by fresh and unique you mean less editing flexibility, then sure, whatever. 
This issue lies less in the software and more in what particular presentational tropes people use with the editing software. Shock to precisely nobody with even the most basic sense of pattern recognition, tropes are not bad. Speaking as someone who's actually been paid to edit videos before, you're damn right this point gets on my tits. I also hate it when some commentators use voice changers to speed up their voice to sound really high pissed. Dudo Tones does that all the time in every single one of her commentaries. I get that she doesn't want to show her real voice, but seriously, the voice changer sounds so annoying. It sounds like Fred or something, like I said. I love how you focus solely on how annoyed it makes you personally, and conveniently leave out the whole trans woman who dislikes the sound of her own voice part of the equation. Look, I, I know better than to instantly leap to the conclusion that this was done out of some form of transphobia, especially since I'm not getting as much misgendering from you as the first time I came across your channel, but like, coupled with the desperate attempts at defending Scott Cawthon, this is reflecting way worse on you than it is on Doodle. On that note... Most people see necromancers as menacing or even villainous due to the close association with death. Not all necromancers are evil, but the forces they manipulate are considered taboo by many societies. I really do think that if some commentators don't want to use the natural voice, they should do text-based commentaries, or better yet, use a text-to-speech program. I mean, you can do what you want with your commentaries, be my guess. But God forbid you alter your voice pitch. But I am just not that much of a fan of high pissed, speed up squeaky voices being used all that much in commentaries and other more serious videos. Literally the only example you brought up was Doodle. Even leaving aside the factor of gender dysphoria, how is anyone meant to watch this video and see your case as a community wide issue? <clears throat> we made monkeys smarter. Then we showed them guns assuming they wouldn't figure out how to use them. We're dumb. Now they want to take the world away from us. And let's face it, we kind of deserve it. Many members of the community have told me many times that I can't take criticism just because I happen to disagree with certain criticisms used towards my content. No way, I thought your frequent deflection throughout the second half of the video was just spellbinding. Well, this pisses me off! In fact, I can take criticism, and I am taking some criticisms into consideration to make my videos a little better. I'll hold you to that when you stumble upon this video. However, I am not changing my usual style of the videos just to satisfy the entire commentary community. Yep, definitely not deflection. I think some despise that I use Windows Movie Maker. The commentaries from that community, mainly most of them anyways, do the same repair of crap every freaking time. I watched a CC commentary and then another, and I feel like both are just wasting my damn precious time. Two unspecified videos equals the entire community now. Considering the choice of specific people you've covered thus far, should I even be surprised at this? So, you got your powers by making a contract with something? Is it in writing, perchance? Well, never mind. Just tell me this. Can I get your powers by eating you? They say, oh, blah, 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 you need work, blah, 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 or something like that. I'm a straw man. Da -da 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 -da. I'm a straw man. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know how to word it at all. I mean, giving examples is just a tactic of the horrible, nasty commentators, isn't it? But it feels like they don't even try to add anything unique or even remotely amazing to the commentaries. You wield a machine gun. Feel free to decide what kind. The skits from them, most of the time, are also boring as hell, and it makes me think like, Alright, can you just move on to the damn video already? It feels like to me that they just record their voices, edit the video with all that stuff, and then click the save to compare button, upload to YouTube, and BAM! The video is there for everyone to see! Ooh, my turn! The intro sequences from them, most of the time, are also boring as hell, and it makes me think like, Alright, can you just move on to the damn video already? It feels like to me that they just recall Unrelated Sonic FMVs and artistically inconsistent collages of irrelevant cartoon characters. Edit the video with all that stuff, 
and then click the save to compare button, upload to YouTube, and BAM! The video is there for everyone to see! It's okay folks, we've got just over a minute of the video to go. I'm fully aware that there are only so many ways I can say that self-awareness is Oscar's kryptonite. They don't even put that much effort into them, and instead, they make me feel like I am just wasting my time. That I could be watching better YouTube videos. Then watch those? Like, the only reason I can fathom as to why you're even putting yourself through content that you've established you don't like is either out of a knee-jerk desire to defend yourself, or to rectify trivial personal vendettas. Hence the entire existence of this rant video. Attitudes like this are the reason the don't like, don't watch argument continues to survive. <gasps> Softest. You hear your mentor has an old conflict with a dangerous adversary. Softer. You hear that your mentor is in danger right now. Harder, you discover that your mentor has been kidnapped. Hardest, you find out your mentor has been corrupted and turned against you. Many of those videos just feel half-assed to me. Maybe you should change your name to ViewSonic Shadow 98 you're quite apt at projecting. Lightsabers normally require the lightsaber skill to wield. However, since that skill is not an option for the player characters in this book, players must use a lightsaber untrained. This is deliberate because there are few people in the galaxy who properly know how to fight with a lightsaber. However, if the GM feels it is warranted, he can create the lightsaber skill as a custom skill of his players. Lightsabers cannot be sundered. This really pisses me off and grinds my gears. Screw that crap. Fuck that shit. I'm done. And this is my rant on the commentary community. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, I did, but probably not for the reasons you intended. Overall, the commentary community is a really bad and toxic community that makes a lot of commentaries that are either boring or just a mess in general, and always gets into way too many drama on the internet. Stop it. To have sex. Screw the commentary community. Take it out to dinner first. Fuck that community. Dear god, wear protection at least. It's just a huge pile of dog shit that even a dog wouldn't be caught dead taking a crap on it. I'm not sure a live dog would have much business specifically defecating on an existing pile of canine fecal matter, but... You know, keep working on those analogies, I'm sure one will make sense eventually. While there are many great commentators and people in the community, there are also many that are really bad! I feel that the bad just outweighs the good in this community. You know, the good that I barely spent any time on outside of a pinch of name drops. Gotta keep the fake anger up for that there ranting edge. I will do more videos on this channel. Maybe even another rant this week. Who knows? We'll see. Be very afraid, people. So yeah. Anyways, I am Sonic Shadow 98 signing off. Have a nice rest of your day, everyone. This is why I drink myself to death every evening. There's something in the way and I don't like it. And it's going to make me wait forevermore. Obey the computer, the computer is your friend, all hail friend computer!